Well, hello and welcome back to Wallspin TV. And we are no longer in the Great Britain and Scotland. We are in Mexico. And I've got to say, I am absolutely loving this map. This map is lovely. I was a little bit worried when we got to the game that it was all going to be off-road. But it isn't. We've got loads of lovely roads to be driving. Now, this video is going to be dedicated to wheel users. How to tune your wheel to get the best feeling for you. Now, these wheel settings are so personal. Everyone likes it slightly different. Now, the reason I haven't put a video out straight away, like many other YouTubers out there, is because I needed to get a greater understanding of actually what is going on with the physics of this game, because they are different. They're definitely very different. Um, they are a little bit more arcadey than even what Forza Horizon 4 was, in my opinion. They got a lot more grip for front-wheel drive cars and rear-wheel drive cars. Um, and that's actually all positive. I, I'm not going to say any of that as a negative. The only negative I can find about this game is the understeer. I'm struggling to tune in a very nice feeling of understeer on the car. Forza Horizon 4, my wheel went light. I felt it instantly. On this, it just goes a tad lighter. It's not, you know, huge difference. Um, so yeah, I mean, but it's good. We can still drift. It's a very underpowered car, this. But I love it. It's got a Dorito in its engine bay, and it's called an RX-7. I love, that's another good thing about this game. The sounds are so much better. This thing sounded like an RC car in um, Horizon 4. But no, it actually sounds like a real RX-7. Now, a couple of things. When we're using a wheel, if you're new to a wheel, you've probably got a wheel got home and thought, oh my lord, what is going on? I'm sliding off everywhere, I'm understeering everywhere. It, it's, that's perfectly normal. You will not jump straight on a wheel and think, I am drift king, oh, and launch it into corners. It's just not gonna happen, all right? You need to understand what the wheel is actually telling you, the feedback it is giving you. You need to learn it all because we have no G-forces in our bum on a rig, unfortunately. We can't feel the way the car's moving. All of that feedback is through the wheel. So, in some cases, it is very annoying and frustrating, but trust me, stick with it, and you will be there. You will get there in the end. Now, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go through all of the wheels. I'm gonna tell you what all the settings are. I'm gonna give you my settings. Um, but just remember, you are not going to dial out any imperfections with your tune. When you are a wheel user, your car tune is so important. So just remember that, and another video will be coming out for this. Now you can follow my tutorial for Forza Horizon 4. I am doing the same thing. It is doing the same. A couple of minor tweaks, but you know, it's actually majorly the same. So if you will look, I'm just gonna go into a donut. You're probably thinking, why is this important? But just watch. Go into a donut, my wheel automatically wants to counter steer and it wants to straighten out when I catch grip. It's doing some of the work for me. And what we want to do, if you look, it's counter steered. I'm gonna come off the throttle, or into the railing, but it's straightened up. We want to get the wheel to do a lot of the work for us. Yeah, when we're drifting in real life, or sliding, the wheel counter steers. When we push out of the corner, the wheel straightens itself out. And we're gonna do that with wheel tuning. And it's really, really, really important to get this right. So, when you go into tuning, don't use a controller. We'll use our wheel. And then when you're in the settings, then we can muck about with it. So, we go into menu, into settings. And I actually, you know what? We're gonna start from the top, difficulty. I've seen a lot of YouTubers saying about keeping your traction control and stability control on. No, if you're racing, Yes, maybe, but if you're having fun and you want to go and have a little slide around and feel the best part of the simulation, if you can call that, because let's be honest, it's a bit of an arcade sim, this, but if you want it to feel as real as ever, then you want your traction control and stability control off, especially if you're drifting. Traction control and stability control cannot be on. I have a manual shifter. I use manual with clutch. I've got a clutch pedal. If you don't have one, you don't need to have a clutch pedal. You can just put it to manual. 
Now, obviously, if you've got paddles, you don't need a clutch. It's all good. So we've all got different setups. So just remember that. For drifting, you want to have manual with clutch, everything off, basically. Now, on Forza Horizon 4, I used standard steering. If you are new to a wheel, I would still say use standard um, setting. Because in this game, it is nothing like Horizon 4. In Horizon 4, simulation gave the most horrible kickback. Um, when you was sideways and you would just spin out of control and standard like, throw cars around all day long It was it was actually quite poor on simulation. This game is on a different level for me Simulation feels so much better and I've been running simulation um, The difference between simulation and standard is that in standard they have some built-in features as to make it easier for you if you're new to a wheel if you're an old-school wheel Jedi Stick it to simulation and we'll leave it there. For me, anti-lock brakes, I don't need ABS. Um, I know when I'm about to lock up, I can see it, I can feel it. I don't need ABS. You will get better braking performance with this off. Um, and it'll make you a better driver in the end as well. So the rest of it is completely up to you. But anyway, steering, simulation, traction control, stability control, we'll get them off. Then we're down to HUD. Go down to the very bottom. And you will have cockpit drift camera. Now, if you're going sideways, the head view will turn sideways if you're inside the car. So, you can take my settings down. I turn this on all the time. I've had a little um, fiddle with it, but I actually like this pretty not far off the standard settings. So, I've left them where they are. Now, this is all important to wheel users, so don't go jumping off the video. Trust me, this is all important. It's all relevant. Uh, so now we go into we don't need me to go through controls you can map up whatever buttons you want I don't have look left look right and all the business. I'd rather be able to put me help me uh, roof down I'd like my horn I'd like to go in photo mode This can be a bit of a headache all on its own, but you can have loads of different Setups and save them to five different profiles So you map whatever buttons you want now if you're new to a wheel you do have to come into there and map your clutch, your throttle, your brake, and your gears, and your handbrake. Now I have my gears, obviously, on a shifter, so I use my right paddle as a handbrake. It's not as good as what it was in Forza Horizon 5, because I'll go into it in a minute. We have lost a few settings. So, in advanced controls, this is where the important stuff is. Vibration. Very first thing I do in any Forza game, whether it be motorsport or horizon, I turn vibration off. I don't need my wheel to vibrate like a controller. I've got force feedback for that. Personal preference, if you want it on, keep it on. Me, rubbish, it's straight off. Dead zones. You don't need a dead zone in a wheel. The second I move that wheel, I want an input being put into this wheel. So, zero, 100. Steering linearity is something I have really, really mucked around with. The reason I haven't put a video out is I had to understand every single one of these settings perfectly before I try to make a video of it and start telling other people what to do. I've watched some other videos and there's very few that are right in my opinion. Most of them are completely wrong in the way that they're explaining it. And actually asking people to comment in the comment section, please tell me what you think with this because I'm not 100% sure. Well, you know what? Don't put a video out until you actually know what you're doing. So, steering linearity is the value of accuracy. So, when I turn my wheel, it's accurate. If I have it on a lower setting, it's more accurate when I'm away from the center when it's up at a higher set and it's more accurate when I'm right at the very full lock. It makes no sense to really muck about with this. So I've dropped it five points down, five points above. And if I'm honest, from my opinion, 50 is where it needs to be. You can feel a little bit more understeer at a lower number. Um, and that is the biggest problem with this game is I'm struggling with the feeling of understeer. And I've tried hundreds, if not thousands of settings like in, in changing the settings up different ways and I just cannot get it how I had it in Forza Horizon 4. But I'm just going to accept that's part of this game because we have lost some settings. Now, acceleration, dead zones, we don't need to muck about with anything other than our clutch. I like a little bit of a dead zone on my clutch. If I'm resting my foot on it, then it can be pushed down a little bit. But also when I'm disengaging and engaging, 
I like to have a little bit of a dead spot on the inside and out. So I, I, I drive a car all day, every day. Um, I just like it a little bit realistic like that. So I use 15 and 90. E-brake, 10 and 100. Really, it's a switch. It's on or off. It's on my paddle. It makes no difference. Vibration doesn't make no difference. Right. So under vibration, these ones here are the important ones. Now, force feedback is the feedback that is pushing against your wheel. So you hit that bump hit the curb, you're sliding, you bump into cars, that is that wheel juddering. That is the feedback. Now, I have that just over standard. It feels pretty good in this game straight out the bat. So, quite happy with that. Center spring scale. That is the force in which when you're sideways, the wheel wants to center. And it's the power in which that is actually pulling that wheel to center. Now, if you go onto Forza Horizon 5 support and look at their wheel tuning guide, they say don't muck about with this. But if I'm honest, again, like Forza Horizon 4, this was actually one of the most important things that I found to change, especially when I'm sliding, like drifting. This makes a big difference. Now, I've had this anywhere between 1.4 and 1.8. Now, a lot of YouTubers, what I'm seeing, have put this straight on two. They put the wheel damper scale on too, yet they've dropped the minimum force down. So you're just changing the scales of everything when you do that. That's not right. From my understanding, from what I read on the support website and through the descriptions, that's not right. Um, the reason it goes so light and you need your center spring on two is because you've got your minimum force all the way down. And that mucks up the trail scale of the way that the feedback and spring and that is actually put into your wheel. So... Center spring scale, as I say, is when the wheel was being brought back to center. When you lose the back end, your wheel wants to counter steer for you. So that is an important one. Try it at 1.4 and then, you know, pull it up a little bit at a time and see what's better for you. Wheel damper scale is a very, very personal thing. This is the weight of the wheel when you're turning. So imagine having a car with no power steering. It's got heavy steering. Most race cars don't have power steering. And they have quite a heavy feeling um, steering wheel because they're not trying to park in a car park or anywhere like that. So they have it quite high up. Um, if you want a lighter feeling wheel, then you have it lower. It's a completely personal preference. Start at a standard setting and then just adjust from there. And like any setting on a computer game, what you want to do, if you're trying to start from scratch, is to individually change each one to max to min and see what the difference is, how that feels to you. As I say, they're very personal preference, these settings. Mechanical trail scale. Now, this is where you feel the understeer at low and the oversteer at high. I genuinely don't really think this has been perfected within the force of physics. Mechanical trail scale, if I drop it to zero, I lose every single bit of feedback when my car goes into understeer. And if I put it all the way up at a higher, when I, lose the, when I lose the back end and the back end starts sliding, the wheel becomes very powerful in counter steering. So I want to feel understeer. So I've gone one point below and I found that this is the right balance for me. Now, your force feedback minimum force, these are quite un misunderstood, I believe. Now, this is about your tire load and the feeling or the input through the wheel that you're feeling. So, when you have minimum force, when you turn a little bit into the wheel, it's quite light. And as the load gets greater, when you lose traction and all the rest of it, it raises up. And it's about the minimum input into your wheel. Uh, from the feedback side of things so I've really I think I've had this on every setting so far from top to bottom and I found between 0.8 and 1.2 is the best area I've left mine in the end banging the middle where it should be I just find that it's just it's just right the balance is right for what I can get now the load sensitivity is the way that the feedback is sent with the torque through your wheel and the sensitivity of any fluctuation and changes so again with this very low i find that it 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 becomes very numb feeling and if i about very high it becomes oversensitive 
So I've just gone just over one uh, from the standard setting. And again, it, it just, just feels right for me. Now your road fuel scale and off-road fuel scale, these are new to Forza Horizon 5. And I quite like this. I think it's a good idea. And since the patch, there was one other box underneath this bottom bar, um, which was sensitivity, wheel sensitivity, which ultimately actually was wheel rotation. Because if you haven't noticed, we cannot change our rotation anymore. Um, Forza, please put that back in the game i don't know why you've removed it or the, even the steering sensitivity the pc players have got it we've lost it on xbox we need this back um this is very very big for new wheel, wheel users new wheel users can start at 540 to 630 and then as they get used to the wheel they can gradually increase it and on lower branded wheels like myself the thrustmaster tmx you know this is not a thousand pound direct drive wheel this is you know quite a budget wheel it hasn't got the power at 900 degrees to really throw it around. So I'm having to increase certain settings on this higher than what I really should in order to make my wheel have that speed. Um, so we need this back, Forza. Please bring it back. Um, but anyway, road fill scale. This is how you fill in the minor bumps and, and odulations and undulations in the game. I've just turned mine a little bit down. I felt it was a little bit strong from standard. I have dropped it down a little bit further, but it starts becoming numb again. It's an over-occurring thing. I keep finding on this game, it goes numb. Um, off-road, I actually really enjoy the off-road on this game. The first Forza Horizon, I've actually enjoyed off-roading, and I believe it's due to this setting. It's made it so much better for us wheel users. The second you go off-road, Everything changes down to this setting, and it makes things so much easier. Um, I have now put mine at 0 0.6, and if you find your wheels bouncing around and it's difficult to control, just turn it down a little bit more. Now, a lot of your wheel settings are obviously going to change a little bit depending on what car you've got, believe it or not. Because some cars have got slightly heavier feeling than others. And you will feel the difference. So what we want to do is get a nice base wheel setting. And then all the rest is done in car tuning. And I will bring out a video, as I say, for car tuning. It's really important that your car is set up correctly when you're a wheel user. So for any new wheel users, trust me, you're going to want to watch this video and understand the tuning side of things. Because each car, as you now know, feels completely different whenever you're jumping from one to another. So... As I say, copy my settings if you've got a Thrustmaster or even a Logitech G29, G920. I've got, I'm part of a wheel club, got a big group of us. We've all got different wheels. Some of us got the same wheels. And most of the people are actually using my wheel settings with a couple of little adjustments here and there, just so it's personal preference, i.e. wheel damper scale, center spring scale. They're quite personal preference things. Um, but the rest are pretty much using my setup because I think this is just right. Now, as I said, what we want our wheel to do, we actually want it to do a lot of the work for us. Look, camp steers, and then straighten back up. We want this wheel to do the majority of work for us, so that we, and we want it strong as well. So when I'm turning, let's go back up. When I'm turning into a corner, I want to feel the second the chassis flexes and I'm about to lose the back end. I want to feel that. I want. I need to know when to camp steer. So the wheel goes lighter as I'm turning in. So we've got quite a sweeping corner here. So as I'm turning in, I'm feeling it lighten off a little bit as the back end's starting to push. See, to feel a little jig in the wheel. I can feel each individual like that. I feel each individual and I can react to it straight away. When I'm turning in, the back end comes out. I caught it straight away. The wheel was letting me know. It's feeding back that important information that the back end's about to go you need to counter steer and a lot of the time counter steers for me because the center springs up it turned itself all right so look it's doing the work for us and then it's about understanding each individual little feeling of the wheel and all your new users don't worry you will slide out you will understeer you will drive straight through roads because that's the learning process just got to stick with it and just have fun and I use these settings for drifting. This isn't a drift car, this is a street grip drifter, if you like. And this um, share code is available, actually. 
if you go into URXBLDN, uh, that's my gamer tag, and or even just search Wheelspin TV, this should come up. From now on, any tunes that I put up for cars, once they are how I like it, I will uh, put Wheelspin TV in the description. So you should just type that in, you should be able to find it. Otherwise, you can find them all under my gamer tag. Um, and all of my tunes are purely dedicated to Will users. All right, this video and this channel, when it comes to Forza, is all Will use. So, any any of you Will users out there, stick with me, and I'll help you through it. Any questions, any comments, any problems, stick them in there. I always do my best to answer within a couple of days, at the very latest. Now, I know my channel's been quiet for a little while. Um, I'm not even gonna come out of excuses, excuses. I've had a motorbike accident, busy at work. I've just life, life is life. But I've also had to really settle down and get into this game before I can start telling people what to do. But I've always been there at the comment section answering those questions, and I always will be, so don't worry. Now, if you like what you see, please hit that subscribe button, like the video, share it to any of your will user friends. And um, yeah, let's get out, let's have a cruise. Send me a message on Xbox. Once they please sort these convoy issues out, we can get out, have a laugh. I don't know what the Mac server is on this, but if we can fill a server, lovely. Send me messages. Love to speak to you all. Anyway, have a good time. Be lucky, and I'll see you on the next one.